Trump and his ties with Moscow remain the big story here, even on a day struck by violence. Late this evening, another bombshell from the Washington Post. Quote, the special counsel overseeing the investigation into Russia's role in the 2016 election is interviewing senior intelligence officials as part of a widening probe that now includes an examination of whether President Trump attempted to obstruct justice. So he's in the crosshairs. Although former director Comey assured President Trump he was not under investigation, officials now say that changed shortly after Comey's firing. This comes after the New York Times reported that the president has been considering firing Mr. Mueller himself, but someone his staff waved him off the idea, warning that this would make a bad situation worse. We'll see about that. Yesterday, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein assured members of Congress that Mr. Mueller investigation would remain independent. Director Mueller is going to have the full degree of independence that he needs. As long as I'm in this position, he's not going to be fired without good cause. Well, that's bad news for Trump. So for now, Robert Mueller is safe. I'm joined right now by The Washington Post, Devlin Barrett, national security reporter with The Washington Post, Glenn Thrush, White House reporter for The New York Times and MSNBC Bill Analyst, and Ashley Parker, White House reporter for The Washington Post. Uh, thank you all. Let me start with, with Glenn and work across, across the table here. And John McLaughlin, let me, uh, let, let's talk about this. The Washington Post is reporting tonight that the special counsel, Robert Mueller, is in fact focusing on the president, not about the Russian matter so much right now, but about what he did to crush it, to quash the investigation. Whether he, I think it's about Comey and what he tried to get Comey to do, swear loyalty to him, end the investigation of Michael Flynn, and ultimately fire the guy. <laughs> Are they the elements of this case? Well, uh, you know, as people have said before, it's often not the crime, but the cover up. And we knew generally that the Comey, his interactions with Comey were problematic from an obstruction of justice point of view, not saying that he obstructed justice, but certainly worth investigating. What's novel about this story is that they're also talking to Dan Coats, Admiral Rogers of the NSA, and one of Admiral Rogers' uh, deputies. Uh, I'm very intrigued to figure out what they are going to talk about. And Chris, what makes this very interesting is we reported yesterday that the thing that is driving the president most crazy, the reason why he would con even consider trying to get Rosenstein to get rid of Mueller, is he wants an exoneration personally in this matter. And what the Washington Post story does is precisely the opposite. Yeah, let me go to Devlin Barrett, who broke the story for, for the Post. Uh, Devlin, get, tell us how it all fits together. Trump's uh, fear of a relationship, perhaps. I'm trying to see it from Trump's point of view. Some concern that there's a relationship, an axis of whatever evil, as far as he's concerned, between Comey and Mueller. And in fact, Trump's uh, dis dislike for having anybody coming at him. And this is a case where they're going at him on a matter that could be impeachable. Well, right. And so what we're reporting is that uh, there is a serious look, a uh, serious investigation into Trump's conduct uh, about possible attempted obstruction of justice. And look, a lot of the factual stuff is out there. You know, Comey certainly laid out a lot of facts where, that he said he was concerned. But he said, but ultimately, that's, that's up to Mueller to take a look at. And what we're told is that Mueller is, in fact, taking a look at. And as Glenn pointed out, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting part of this that they are going to be talking to, uh, you know, senior intelligence officials about this, about this issue. Do we know um, how close this is to uh, targeting him? I mean, we hear these phrases like subject of investigation, interested party, whatever, and then we know the term target. Is Trump a target? Well, technically speaking, Trump can't be a target in the normal legal sense of the word because uh, Justice Department policy is that a sitting president can't be indicted. Uh, but the point here, that, that's a legal nicety. The point here is that there is an investigation going on to see if the president may have committed a crime. That's a pretty big deal. I think that's a, a remarkable step okay. in this investigation generally. Well, who else could be, uh, be focused on as guilty of obstruction of justice, whether it's impeachable or indictable in either case, than the person who did it? I mean, maybe I'm talking a tautology right. here or whatever, but uh, a redundancy. But if there's only one guy that can obstruct justice, really, in this case, that's the chief executive, the president, who has higher fire authority over, uh, ultimately, you could say, over anybody in the executive branch, because he could keep firing people a la Nixon until he got the person to do what he wanted him to do or found the person who would do it, uh, you know. Well, that's right. And a key part of this investigation is the firing of Comey itself, obviously. And we're told that it was days after <laughs> that event that this investigation, looking specifically at the president's conduct, began. 
Let's talk to Ashley. You, you guys who report these great stories every day and this great rivalry between the Times and the Post <laughs> know more than you report, but give me a little context here. This Trump this determination to control all things on the planet, we know that part. You know, he changes wives, he changes, he doesn't like this, he moves here, he stays there, he owns <laughs> things, he buys things. The guy basically controls the universities in tangible touch with. Now he finds himself in a situation where there's such a thing as a Justice Department, and there's such a thing as an FBI director. And then ultimately, because of his behavior and manhandling of this whole, there's a special counsel looking at him. It seems to me it makes perfect sense, that according to the reporting we're getting, that he will try to get rid of this guy. But now we find that the guy has got him in the crosshairs, that he's, in fact, a, tar a subject of an obstruction of justice violation here. Well, that's exactly the problem, which is that originally the president didn't like this investigation into possible collusion, and because he was trying to control it and trying to publicly exonerate himself, he took some steps that have now led to this next investigation into possible obstruction of justice that is being led by Mueller. And now he's certainly not going to like that, as Glenn's story mentioned last night. And likely, normally in one of these situations, a traditional president, when they are getting investigated for this, they mm -hmm. lock down, they have their lawyers, does all the speaking for them. But Trump, if history is any indication, is again going to try to control this, going to try to get in front of this, and that's where he could run into even more headaches. So it becomes a cascading avalanche effect. John McLaughlin, I mean, I, I, everybody has watched this fight between the intelligence agencies and the executive going back to Scooter Libby and all that crap that went on with the neocons in the White House and over in the Defense Department. Knows that the Defense Department, the, uh, the, well, the intelligence people don't particularly like wise guy politicians. They don't like them. They don't like people that cover their butt every time they do something wrong. Uh, what what role will the intelligence community play in this case? Because if it shifts from the issue of Russia and the ties with Russia to the question of covering up those behaviors, uh, what, what, what is he fearful? Who are the witnesses he's afraid of? He's afraid of what, not probably not what Steve Bannon will say or won't say, or Reince Priebus. He must be worried about the, the, the public servants, the civil servants around him yeah, you, you who know, know what he's been up to. You know, Chris, when I looked at the hearings over the last several days, it seemed to me that the big missing piece here, and this may be what has changed the story a bit, is that we don't have any insight publicly into whatever conversations the president had with the director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, with... Well, they I, won't at, talk. With, well, they won't talk. That's right. So far, they haven't talked. Will they well, talk under right, law, right, under the pressure of, a, of a, uh, a subpoena? Will they talk to FBI agents who come and interview them? Oh, of course they will. They'll well, talk or to... Need a, or do you need a grand jury? No, I think they'll talk under oath to Mueller's people. Uh, Coates didn't talk publicly. Rogers did some, uh, some yeah. closed session. And um, I, my hunch is here that whatever took place in those conversations is going to be pivotal in this right. because when you look at what Comey heard from Trump, it raises suspicions. If you find that ultimately the president also asked Coates and others to intervene with Comey, I think it adds a lot of evidence, a lot of weight to the suspicion about obstruction of justice. So I think that may be the new element that we're yeah. seeing emerge in this. And they're story. not weasels, these guys. These are men, particularly they are men in this case, who have <laughs> proud careers behind them and they like to have proud legacies. They're not like the, the, the Weasley people running around that table with him in that cabinet room the other day. Anyway, a spokesman <laughs> for our press, spokesperson for President Trump's personal lawyer, Mark Cassowitz, is now he's got a lawyer with spokespeople. How derived, how far away from this guy is he getting in this case? Following the statement in response to the broad Washington Post reporting, quote, the FBI leak of information regarding the president is outrageous, inexcusable, and illegal. Uh, well, let's go to the guy who, brought, who got the story. Devlin, uh, are, you really, are you guilty of all those crimes? <laughs> I mean, it just seems like anything that gets reported unofficially about this administration, he didn't put out in some sort of bleep or whatever uh, tweet, is somehow a crime. If it hasn't been tweeted by Trump, it's a crime. We're not supposed to know I'm what good. happens behind the scenes. Your thoughts. What do you think of this uh, This. this uh, this uh, mouthpiece lawyer's mouthpiece. Now we got a mouthpiece with a mouthpiece. You don't even go to the lawyer, you gotta go to the lawyer's flack. This is, this is outrageous. Go ahead, what do you think of it? The charge that you guys are guilty of a crime or somebody is. Devlin, I don't know what happened. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that was to me. I apologize. So, I, I, one of the things I think is an interesting element of all this. That's is how I ask a question. It's with an interrogative <laughs> sound at the end. Of it. What's the problem, Devlin? I mean, let's go. Speak, Devlin. Uh, okay. Here's the thing. Here's, here's how I see it. Uh, what's interesting to part of what's interesting to me about what just what we're reporting is that you know people have been framing the Comey Trump dynamic as essentially a he said he said. What I think is interesting about the current state of the investigation, as best we can tell, is. They're trying to figure out, okay, who can corroborate Comey's version or Trump's version of events? 
and they're looking at, frankly, senior government officials uh, who had other conversations with the president on some of these topics, and that's that's John an important McLaughlin dynamic. Just said that. Did you hear McLaughlin just say that it would be people of some prominence who are principals, people like the head of national intelligence, right. uh, people head of the, the CIA, people in that NSA, people who actually have principal positions. They're not just flax or underlings. Right, and there's and there's not that many one witness cases in the world, right? Prosecutors don't do much with one witness cases. And so what you're seeing is you're seeing them gather up a bunch of witnesses and see what the totality of that is. Okay. Well, let me ask. Let me ask, uh, Glenn. If you were to have like a universal judgment, like we study in religion, will happen someday when everybody's going to be in the room and everybody's going to know the full truth. I hope not, ma'am. <laughs> well, in this case, I hope we're going to get close to that. Who would you want in the room? Uh, who would I want in the room? To find out whether there was obstruction of justice here, which is now apparently going to be the subject of this general counsel's efforts for a while now. To find out whether the president of the United States obstructed justice. Who could prove such? Well, look, I, I'd want you in the room, but I mean, I, I, look, I, I'm not sure who the ultimate arbiter is. Clearly, the White House is attempting to erode uh, Mueller's credibility. Here's what was interesting about that Kazowitz statement. He said, the FBI is leaking all this stuff. Devlin, correct me if I'm wrong. He's going. You're, uh, Devlin's going. De Devlin is going. No, I'm, I'm, here. Probably, I'm, I'm here. Okay, he's here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Your story doesn't what do you say. Want, what do you want? Your, your story does not say that you that your sourcing in this was the FBI. Kazowitz wanted to inject into that story their beef with the uh, beef with the FBI. Um, it is not something that your story ascertained. It is clear. I think the tell of Kazowitz's statement is that they want to pick that fight with Comey and they want to pick that fight with the FBI. That's right, and and I'm, I'll be honest. It from from where I sit, it's not clear to me how much they even differentiate between Mueller and the FBI and Comey at this point. Um, but but I, you're absolutely right that our story doesn't put any of this on FBI officials. Our story puts this on uh, officials okay. who who have knowledge. Uh, first of all, I think there's a, a, a complete distraction. I don't care whether the president's valet gave us the information. I want to know <laughs> what happened. And the more we focus on who the source is, the more we're playing their game. Let me get back to you, Devlin. I want to ask about this sense that the, from the president's perspective, when he puts his little head on the, well, everything's little, I guess, but he puts his head on the, on the pillow tonight, and he starts worrying. He's worried because the deep state is the right wing would say, you know, the, the Alex, whatever his name, those kind of people. The deep state's coming out. It could just be the truth's coming after him. What's he really afraid of and who has the truth? Who possesses the ability to hurt him in, in court or before the Congress? Well, I think what they're doing is they're compiling the strongest evidentiary case they have for good or bad. And, you know, I think to some degree, only those people know how solid the evidence is. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.